All right, today we're going to do, this will be number 29. I don't really think we'll take that many notes in our journal, and then we'll switch over. We've got um, a couple of things in Delta Math to do, but we need to make sure we cover this topic. All right, we're going to talk today about point slope form. and writing equations. And today's the 28th. Point slope form. It's up to you. If you want, if you got something blue there, I don't think it'd be too easy to write on. It's up to you. Oh, it's up to you. I'm going on to here. All right, so 29. Point slope form. And writing linear equations. All right, so, so far, we've had, we started with slope-intercept form that we could graph from, Michael, close your Chromebook. And then we've had standard form that we found our x and y intercepts. So point-slope form, what's the two things you think we're going to have? What's the, t we're going to have a point and we're going to have a slope. So we're going to have a little of both worlds here, okay, and learn how to, that they work together. All right, so if we have, all right, let's, let's remember about it. Let's start here. Let's say I have, or I'm going to use our slope formula. What is that slope formula that we used? Mm -hmm. So we had the M equals the Y2 minus the Y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so suppose that I know a line passes through the point one three and has a slope of two. Okay. They didn't give me the other point. If they did, I could have found my slope. They didn't. They didn't give me the y-intercept, so I can't use the slope and the y-intercept to write our slope-intercept form. But we need an equation to be able to work with this line. Okay. All right. So let's use what we know. We know we've got our point. We know that this is x and this is y. Okay. So if I use that point-slope formula, I have enough to fill in y minus 3, because that's my y, and x minus 1, and we know that it equals 2, right? Okay, that's what we know. We got a, we've got one ordered pair, we've got the slope, we just don't know what the other ordered pair is. All right. So when we've got that, we rearrange it a little bit, and we say, okay then, y minus 3 equals 2 times x minus 1. Because we can do that, because if this was an equation, think about this means this divided by this gives you this, right? I mean, that's what it means. So the opposite of dividing 
is multiplying. Like if I was trying to isolate this, I would have multiplied x minus 1 on both sides. This would have canceled out. I would have only had y minus 3 left, and I would have equaled 2 times the x minus 1. Okay, are you with me on that? Like if I had, let me give you a different one so you can see. If I had, uh, uh, let's keep the y. Sorry. All right. Let's say I just had y minus 3 equals 6. Let's say it was as basic as that. And I said solve that equation. You would have said, okay, this is dividing. The opposite of that is multiplying. And you would have multiplied both sides by 3. And you would have got y equals 6 times 3, which is your 18. All right? Everybody with me on that? That's just solving a one-step equation. Okay? <clears throat> We're doing the same thing here. It's just that now instead of just y, I have y minus 3 on top. And instead of just a number, I have x minus 1 on top. So I multiplied it on both sides to get to here. Okay. Now, I'm not, it's not simplified in already. I mean, there's more I can do with it. But this right here is in point slope form, okay, because this is your slope, and this is your point. Now, the thing you have to remember is the equation is set up with those minuses. So if I gave you the equation in point-slope form and said, what is the point, what is the slope, when you pull out these pieces, they went into negative spots. Are these numbers negatives? When I pull them out as the point? No. Remember, our point was 1, 3. If you just look at them in here, yeah, if I'm working with them, they are now. Because just like when we found slope, a minus was in the equation. Okay? So if I gave you, let's say, negative 2 and 4 and a slope of 1 half, okay, your, your point slope form is basically y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That is point slope form without any numbers. So if this is the numbers that I've got to put in, remember this is x, this is y. So if I'm plugging in negative 4, it's already a negative spot. So you got to think it's going in like this. Okay. Oops. Let's slide that up a little bit. And then our slope comes next. And then x minus x1. Okay. Now, I would go ahead and clean that up. I wouldn't leave it as minus and negative because minus and negative is really what? plus positive. So if they wanted this point in this slope written in point slope form, I would write y plus 4 equals 1 half times x plus 2. Okay. If that's all they asked for, that's written in point slope form. Now, you saw this form the other day when you did some of your delta math and they were asking you to match it to a graph, okay? And at that time, you didn't know about the point and the slope. We, we could do that now with this equation, and we'll talk about that. But a few of you asked about it, and I said, just go ahead and solve it for y. Because if I solve this for y, what form will it be in? Y-intercept, our slope-intercept form, yeah. And then you know how to graph from slope-intercept. Let's go ahead and put it into that. So if I... Convert it, and this is why we learned back in the beginning of the year 
how to solve those multi-step equations, because that's what this is. How do I get rid of these parentheses? Yeah, I got to multiply, I got to distribute. So I got y plus 4 equals 1 half x, and 1 half times 2 is 1. And then um, we said we're going to slope-intercept form, so I'm getting y by itself. So what do we got to do with the 4? Yeah, move it to the other side. We kind of talked about that during our standard form to slope-intercept form. So we subtract 4. And I have something to combine it with. So y would equal 1 half x minus Three. So that's the same equation. It's the same line. It's just different ways to write it, depending on where you start, what they're looking for, what you need to have done. Because okay? we could even take this line and we could that equation and we could convert it to standard form. Okay? We're not going through today, but we could do that. All right. Is that sort of? Making sense? Sort of, maybe. Okay. Let's do let's do some more and then it will. Once you get it, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's not bad. It just looks different. Uh, let's see. I tell you what, let me do this. Let's say this is the equation. Y minus five equals one half. times x minus 2. I want to know what is the point, what is your ordered pair, and what is the slope. What's the slope? We'll start there. That's the easiest. Grayson? The slope is the one half. All right. So then what is my point? What's my x? Pardon this interruption. We are looking for a Chromebook. The last three digits are 1, 4, 8, and it would have come out of missing the last digit. Yeah. Last three digits are 1, 4, 8, and it would have come out of missing the last digit. All right. So on my point, what is my, what's my x going to be? Negative or positive? Positive, yeah. And then what's my y? Positive 5. So that line, if I graph that line, and I do I have enough, these two things, is that enough to graph a line? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's do that because that's where we're headed next. Let me give you, I'm just going to give you like a half sheet of graph paper because we're not graphing very much. All right, so let's say we're going to graph this one. So you don't have to take up a lot of room. It's not going to be a very big problem. And we won't bother with rulers. We're just going to do this fast. All right, so where do I have to start when I'm graphing this? Can I start with slope? No, nah, because you don't know what to slope from. So where do I have to start? Yeah, at the point. So at 2, 5, oh, I barely left myself room. Oh, barely. That was a bad choice. All right, so that's where I'm going to start. And then can I slope from there? 
Yeah, I can go not on my graph paper because I ran out of room, but you can go up one and over two, and if you don't have one room like I don't, you could go down and to the left. That's that same line. Okay. Mine's a little. Should have paid attention to my numbers there, but that's okay. You get the idea. Let's number these so they'll match because we're just going to glue this in on somehow. Right. So I could graph it just by having the point and the slope. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'll tell you what, let me give you this one. I want you to write the equation. And I'm going to give you the point, the slope, so I want you to write the equation, and I want you to graph it. So let's do slope of negative 3 and a point of negative 1, 7. So write your equation and graph it. And I didn't say, but we only use point-slope form when we have non-vertical lines. So if we had a vertical line undefined, we wouldn't use point-slope form, okay? Because I can't, can you identify the slope of a vertical line? No, so I can't use this form. Yes, Grace. No, there's lots of ways. There's even more. This is just the only three that we cover. Really? Because you have to have more way, more than one way of doing something. Because sometimes, sometimes you'll get two points and they'll say, write the equation in slope-intercept form because they want to be able to graph it easily. Or they'll give you, because um, I wouldn't give you two points and say, write that in standard form. Because standard form leans more towards x and y intercepts, where you know you're looking for when the x is zero and when the y is zero, what's happening. So it really just depends on what you're given to what works the best. And we'll see that in our next topic. We're going to talk about when we get to systems. It kind of depends on what you're given, because there's not one answer that fits all problems. Just more tools in your toolbox. Okay. All right, so if I'm going to, let's write the equation first. So y minus what? All right, and y and minus, is that okay to leave? Yeah. All right, so then equals, what do I put next? Negative 3, and then what's going to be in my parentheses? X plus 1. X plus one. So if they're just asking for the equation, that's it, and you move on with life. Now, we're going to graph it just because we got our handy-dandy graph paper here. And I'm, if I'm graphing it, if they had given me the equation and said, here, graph this equation, then you would pick out these items, okay, and graph from it, or you could solve it for y and graph from point from slope intercept form but if you got this just pick out your pieces so let's see Let try to do a better job at drawing my line this time all right so where am i going to start negative one seven oh, i made it all right, and then what do I do from here? Yeah, I'm going to go down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. All right. 
And Grayson, this I'm going to use this line too, to, to so it's a good example of it. If I asked you, Grayson, to tell me what the y-intercept of this line is, could you? Yes. Could you tell me what the x-intercept is? No. You could get, we could estimate, we could get pretty close, we could go, oh, you know, it's like maybe one and a third or somewhere in that ballpark, but I can't get exact. So this would not be a line that I would want to work with standard form. Standard form's good when you know exactly what the x-intercept is and exactly what the y-intercept is, okay? So that's why we kind of have to have another way to work with these lines and to write the equations because it really just depends on the situation. So that's, that's kind of what I was talking about. Not everything fits nice and neat, okay? Standard form's great, and I like it because it's quick and easy, but like for this, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't work for us. Okay. All right. How are we feeling now? So that's really all there is for you right now. You can do more with it later. But for us, if you can pick out the pieces from the equation, if you can put in the pieces into the equation, and if you can graph from the equation. How are you feeling about that? Feeling okay? With a little practice, you could do okay. All right, let's get this um, graph paper in. And I tell you what, mine, I'm just going to fold it, glue it. It'll fit like that. Well, that, can y'all, like, make it work? All right. Let me 